You know, th- there's a there's a sense in which I sympathize with uh, these 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 eggshell walking woke white folk. Shout out to Seiko Woods for coming out with that one. But uh, but I do sympathize with them because it must be so hard to like dedicate your lives and your podcasts and and writing an entire book. Imagine writing an entire book, all trying to sort of weasel out of a very very easy to refute uh, idea. Uh, or weasel your way into, a, yeah, whatever. But basically, try to present an idea that is so easy to refute for a Christian. And I'm not talking about pa- pagans are confused about everything. So you know, obviously, you can trick pagans very easily. But Christians, you know, we've got the Word of God, and so it must be hard to like try to craft this narrative where it's like it's so e- you could just there's, there's like one verse that just destroys your entire prospect, your entire book. Um, that must be a difficult situation to be in. And, like, they do it because, you know, they, they, they want to be, like, cool to the black uh, friends that they have. I, you know, I sometimes I question if these people even have any black friends. I've got black friends. That's how you know I'm not racist. But anyway, uh, here's these two guys. You got, you know, you know low-budget Billy Corgan over here. And then, you know, every, you know, woke liberal white pastor that you could imagine over here. It's basically an avatar for that crew. And uh, this is on Woke Preacher Clips, and I just want you to hear this, and I just, I address this issue on reparations in my book over the course of, my book is, as you can see, it's very thin, and I address a lot of topics, and I address reparations over the course of like maybe five pages. That's because that's really all it needs, because the word of God is so clear on this issue. But let's see how they try to muddy the waters. I want to read something from Kevin DeYoung's review of your book, which was quite critical, as you know. Um, He says, restitution makes perfect sense. A lot of of gay energy in this one. (laughs) I don't know, man. This podcast is a little bit of too much of that. Definitely biblical. When the person who cheats pays back the person whom they cheated. Zacchaeus did not make restitution with the world or with every poor person in Judea. Instead, he sought to restore fourfold anyone he defrauded. So the argument I'm, I hear from Kevin DeYoung and I hear from other folks in social media is, yes, restitution is eminently biblical and right. But when you are multiple generations removed from both the perpetrators and the immediate victims of the injustice, then it gets too muddled and there, there's no way of equitably determining <laughs> guilt and reparation. Therefore, it, essentially, it's, it's, a, it's an argument of it's too complicated now. So it's, un, it's not worth attempting it's too hard i'm too much of a dum-dum to do it (laughs) that's that's the impression he's trying to give oh those fundies they're just too stupid to figure this out let's see what uh, greg thompson has to say fun to that (laughs) well i mean it's in 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 many ways honestly the first is that it's simply an arbitrary claim that he is making that um that a, a generation or multiple generations absolves us of of obligation that is that is biblically and theologically false he just he just asserts that he doesn't defend it and the, for the idea that it's too complicated we're people that believe in the trinity we're people that believe in the incarnation the full divinity and full humanity of a being we're we're, we're people who profess the resurrection of the dead and that a divine being can be one in three simultaneously in different respects and, and what we're talking about as a form of cultural accounting for 400 years is is too complicated i think it is it, this isn't a this isn't a form of evasion um and i think that this is part of what we tried to say in our response to kevin if the christian church wanted yeah. to try to figure this out if we wanted to try to give ourselves theologically to it then we could um, and so I think the, <laughs> the fact of the matter is that this, th- the entire review felt like a form of evasion and a dismissal of what African-American Christians have been saying for hundreds of years. You don't and agree that, with them. So you must be dismissing them. You know, this is, you can see he's, he's trying to, he's, he's trying to come up with this idea that if you disagree with what they say theologically, well, then you're just dismissing black people. You just, you're just a racist dude. You're just racist. By the way, this is not the issue. People don't see, well, it is, t- it is very complex and it is almost cost prohibitively complex it would imagine the amount of resources that would have to go into figuring out who's been a slave in the past and now they relate to people today and all the intermixing that's happened and now i'm a little bit slave a little bit you know slaver oh it's very complex so the, the there's no it's not the cost would be very great and it wouldn't be it probably wouldn't even be worth it 
uh, even if it was a good thing to consider doing. But you see, Greg just assumes it's a good thing that to consider doing, but unfortunately, well, actually, fortunately, but unfortunately for someone who's trying to be a weasel, the Bible actually does say that the generations matter in this issue. Does it absolve you of your sin because it happened generations ago? Uh, well, it's not your sin if it happened generations ago. The Bible makes that quite clear. Here's what Deuteronomy 24, verse 16 says. And this is why I must be have a simple, little bit of sympathy for these guys. Because they, he writes a whole book where like one verse just dominates him. And you ever heard, ever ever hear that scripture like you know it shuts every mouth? This is what it's talking about. It's just this is mic drop. When someone writes a book on reparations, this is God dropping the mic. Here's what it says. Quote Fathers shall not be put to death for their children, nor children be put to death for their fathers. A person shall be put to death for his own sin. Everybody is responsible for their own sin. You're not responsible for your father's sin. Your children are not responsible for their father's sin. That's what it is saying. So, the generations actually do matter. Does it absolve you of the sin from generations ago? Like, does does the fact that generations have passed means that the sin of the past is absolved? No. The only thing that washes away sin, of course, is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So does it absolve you of the sin of the past? If you sinned in the past and then generations pass, does it absolve you? No. But the generations in the future don't pay for the sins of the past if they didn't do those sins. So that's the issue. It's not that it's too complex, although it would be overly complex. It's not that um, people don't want to do it. Uh, Well, actually, it is that because it's not biblical. We don't want to sin. So there you go. Anyway, that's it. Hope you find this helpful. God bless.